I was working in a haunt and um, it was a maze and I and I could hit like three different spots because as you, yeah. the customer walked through the maze, I could like go behind the scenes and hit them in like three different points. And so I went and I scared this guy at point one and then point two and point three. And then I just started smelling something and I was like, it reeks in here. And I wasn't a manager at the time. So I called my manager on the radio and I was like, hey, like something is up. Like it smelled my whole area smells. And we actually had to shut down the hot and turn the lights on to see what was going on because this guy peed from point one all the way through the maze 2.2. And it was so much that there was like we had to put down like um sawdust and like let it absorb it and then like sweep it up. Oh my <laughs> it was, god. It was, was it was it it was inside, yeah? He was inside, yeah. Oh. So, like, we had to shut down for, like, 15 or 20 minutes and take care of this before we could open again. And it was a busy night. So, like, it was, it was a That's terrible a pretty good one. That's a pretty good shut one. down. A line so, of me. Yeah. And, I mean, it was a lot. I was like, how big is your bladder? Or, like, did I get the whole group? Because, my God. I'm in a fat suit as a clown. And I have a chainsaw. And without a chain. And my favorite thing to do would be to quietly walk into the middle of the, of the, you know, the line that, you know, going back and forth, I would bend down, start the chainsaw and literally just the, the effect of the circle of people knocking over barriers to get away from me. I just, and I was in a full mask, so I could just be underneath there laughing. We're, 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 we're a little like, twisted. You do that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> And just watching the line just disperse, and I was just like, I don't even think those people want to go in now. No, <laughs> that was my that was always my goal was to make people tap out before they got in, so like they would pay and then not even make it to the to inside. Right, that's always like, like you put so much work into like the building and training yeah. the actors and like the whole thing, but it is such it's such like an amazing feeling to be like, no, 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 we were so good, you didn't even want to go in. Yeah, no, correct. <laughs> I always tell people when they work in a, they're like, is it fun to work in a haunted house? I was like, well, you know, um, put yourself in a dark room and put on <laughs> some death metal or some screaming and just sit there by yourself for four hours. And if you can take it, then you can deal with haunted houses. Yeah. And so like the snacks that people brought, it's like, oh, you're sitting in a dark room listening to screaming and it's slow and you're just like eating your Chipotle burrito. Yeah. <laughs> like, So think about what you're going through. What that actor was doing right before you got there was snacking on a Chipotle burrito and drinking some Gatorade in the corner right and just thinking about what they were gonna do to you yeah like, yeah just exactly like, I'm just munching on this Chipotle burrito and what am I gonna do I'm gonna jump out and pretend to barf on you like, yeah. you know so the big question is this how are creators like us who aren't built for the nine to five for the people who put their passion before them being comfortable how do we turn that passion into a living that pays the bills and a life that we love that is the question this podcast will give you the answers my name is noah mitman and welcome to conversations with creators welcome back to conversations with creators i am your host noah mitman and joining me today is haunted house designer actor uh runner extraordinaire cecilia calhoun thank you so much for being on the show thank you for inviting me <laughs> absolutely so tell the people a little bit about what how you got started in the haunted house industry what got you inspired for like what what was the origin story of this uh so my origin story for haunted house is actually really weird i was a <laughs> really <laughs> i was a really terrified child um as a kid like there was a pbs show that my mom let me watch that had skeletons in it like archaeologist level skeletons and i was terrified I had nightmares oh my god years. Um, so scary stuff was definitely not like, I did not watch horror movies. That was not anything that I would do. Um, and when I was in high school, like a freshman in high school, so like 13, 14 years old, I was super involved in sports and academics. And so if you wanted to hang out with me, it was kind of like, you'd have to invite me to a thing, like an activity. Yeah. And this guy really wanted to hang out with me. And his dad ran a volunteer haunted house. And so he was like, hey, do you want to like act with me in this haunted house? And I was like, yeah, it's an activity. Sure. Why not? <laughs> and not really thinking about like you're terrified of everything. Maybe this yeah. isn't the best thing for you. And 
but after seeing all the behind the scenes, like I was not afraid of anything anymore. And I was like, oh, so this is how like this is what fake blood is. And like, this is how you make this. And this is how like the behind the scenes of this scary thing work. And it really just it made me not afraid of things. And I would just kind of was like, that's amazing. I just had so much fun. But when I was 13, that's kind of when I started. And then for the next 18 wow. years, I just. Yeah. Wow. So most haunted houses don't, don't hire unless you're 16. But because this was volunteer and yeah. all the proceeds went to the Red Cross, it didn't really like Asia didn't super matter for that one so yeah yeah because it wasn't super corporate <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> it was just like a little three-day sort of family owned and operated all the proceeds you know all volunteers so mostly high school students um but that was yeah that was my start there you go i actually it's funny too because i was also as a kid terrified of everything like especially, especially like haunted house like i remember specifically we were at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, and there was like this creepy, little, like little boardwalk like ride. It's like so simple, but I was like, I don't want to do it. And and then I'm trying, <laughs> what what year? Because we so we have acted in we we worked together in haunted houses for quite a few years back in the day. I'm trying to think, was it 2000? <laughs> it was oh seven, right? So, no, so you were actually before me. I started uh, in 2010 at that particular haunt. Yeah. So that was at was that that was the 13th floor, correct? Or was yep. it asylum? Yeah. So I started there in 2010. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, man, we have many years experience, and and you have done a quite a lot more. I've only acted in them. You've done everything else. Uh actually yeah. for for stuff that you've put together on your own. What a what was the project and b how did you come up with the like themes and storylines for walking through? Sure. So, um, I have actually run two small haunted houses of my own. So one was um just like a charity that our high school did, um, and that was about three years after I started working in haunted houses. So I was like a junior or a senior in high school at that point. Um, and then in college, I are sort of dorms. There were dorms for like lots of different colleges. It wasn't just one college. Um, we ran a haunted house and we took over the whole basement of a building. So I ran that for two years as well. Um, and for that, my my sort of creative process tends to be with scary stuff tends to be about realism. Um, just because I think the the most subtle things are things that you might encounter in real life and so whenever I'm designing a haunted house I always want your senses to be sort of out of whack so one of the things yeah. I did was um, I did a completely blacked out room with like um, trash bags everywhere and then I hung cloth and I made it wet so it would drip on you and like such a simple thing oh. and it was just water but it never good with horrified by it. oh yeah it was just such like a real thing like oh something dripping on you that you don't know and so that's really my creative process is like really diving into like what senses will just totally weird you out and that are really based in realism so i tend to not go so much for aliens or um you know just monsters that are completely out of this world i tend to try and be a little based in reality like this this could be messed up for you. You don't know, but it could be. Yeah. It's that unknown. It's that like, it's creepy. It probably is disgusting. And that is, I, that's my favorite stuff, honestly, is like the, not the jump scares, but just like under your skin, like uncomfortable situations. Like that's the best. Yeah, like I want people to be thinking about those afterwards. Like I want you to leave and want to take a shower because you feel like you want to get whatever just happened to you off of you. <laughs> and that's why you've designed haunted houses because you're thinking about the <laughs> the shower that's going to happen and the nightmares that are going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love that though. I mean, the sensory thing is that's such a, uh, you you wouldn't think about that like, if you're not trying to design something scary right and and one of the things about designing is is a lot of people think about it in trying to be scary but the scariest things in the world are things that are naturally scary like right. when you're walking down the street and someone is being just super 
weird and you get that sort of tingly sense in your stomach. And so the biggest thing for me is like, how do I make someone who's trying to be scary do it in a way that to them feels very natural? So to everyone else, it feels horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, are there any like training techniques for actors that you've used to kind of capture that? Um, yeah. So for me, when I was training actors and I did that for a long time, I was a performance manager and general manager for nine years. Um, yeah. So my whole like my biggest job was training actors. And what I like to do is I like to get big groups together, like the whole cast and um, do a circle where everyone has to sort of invent a movement because I want them to start being comfortable in their bodies in front of a large crowd and like yeah. comfortable in their bodies doing really weird things in front of large crowds. Because the more comfortable you can be in those weird body movements and the more natural it will look to an onlooker. And so, you know, I would always make people do just really weird things in front of the whole cast. And that really helps people because these people you're going to talk to and you're going to interact with, it's a lot easier to do something in front of like a crowd that you don't know anybody. Yeah. And so like getting them comfortable in front of their peers made it a lot easier for them to perform in, in front of strangers. By the so. way, I remember some of those training sessions and we just had <laughs> so much fucking fun. Like, <laughs> they were they were a ton of fun. <laughs> they were a blast. I remember the... Uh, my, one of my favorites was the the dead sprint to stop right in somebody's in somebody's face, but don't touch them because that's illegal. That was right. great. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like the the best thing for a haunted house actor is to have control of your body, like yeah. control of your facial muscles. Oh, you have to. Yeah, complete control. No matter what you're doing, it might look like you don't control. Like maybe you're running at someone and you're about to slide, but that that slide has got to be controlled. It might look out of control, but like you have to have total control over everything that you're doing. Yeah, because you can't you can't take out a ten year old with a slide. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, if it might happen, but you'll just you'll probably get fired. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, uh, what are some like safety cha challenges that you faced with customer experience and making things seem like hectic and crazy, but actually being safe about it? Um, so a lot of that, it sort of depends on what you're looking at. Because if you're looking at like animatronics, if you're, you know, purchasing animatronics, they look because they're going to pop out at you and, you know, they're going to look really sort of janky i guess yeah. is the best word but they're not like they're highly regulated they're highly controlled there's certain people who work on them so that's one um another thing is making sure that the actors know all of the safety protocols right so um what i used to do if there was a little kid coming in and like their parents just were insisting that they were old enough to go and they probably weren't and they were getting really terrified yeah. what i could do is i would walk I would sort of run through the whole haunt in front and I would give a hand signal to all of my actors to kind of go easy on that kid. Yeah. I right. So, yeah. So, so that, that's one of the things also all of the actors know, you know, all the X, they, all of these things. So if we're in an emergency, all of the actors could stop what they're doing. They could get everybody out. Yeah. Um, I like to have radios placed throughout because safety is really like once, once I've sort of worked on the creative process of like designing a haunt, my next, biggest concern is always safety it's guest safety it's actor safety if an actor is going to be you know up in a rig like who knows how to put them in that rig who's allowed to put them in that rig making sure it's safe making sure that there's enough exits making sure that actors know the actors around um and then just general construction safety you don't want to like make a bridge and it fall down in the middle of a show yeah. so <laughs> It can um, feel like it's going to fall when you make some some soft steps on it but it shouldn't actually fall Exactly. Right. So so and that comes down to a lot of the building team, like their their artist, their artistic like presence. So you can make everything really safe from a construction standpoint and then they'll come in and they'll paint or they'll add ad boards that look like they're going to fall down. But they they never would like that's sort of the artistic side, because the the first side is making sure that everything is stable. Everything is safe. Yeah. Which you have to because that's how you stay open. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> you don't want real injuries. No, no. They they will happen because when especially with like you have to be so certain of it because 
people are when you people are scared and they do crazy shit when they're scared sometimes. Like so you know oh, absolutely. Either. I mean I've had people run into walls, I've had people punch actors and you know the the, the fight or flight response response can be really, really real. serious in haunted houses, especially if you have a guest who is really scared and they their flight you know, they want to fly and they had to get out ever been into before like that can cause a lot of problems yeah yeah absolutely have you uh, did you get away with the acting career without getting punched or did you get did you catch one nope definitely been punched you've been punched <laughs> yep i think i got definitely been punched one times. time <laughs> but i was pretty good at like reading body language of like okay you're more pissed off than scared now and i need to back off <laughs> yeah that's and that's the the worst one that happened to me was definitely that like i was following kind of a troublesome group and the, the guy was huge because yeah. like i'm pretty tall and he was like i don't know six six or something and i was following them because they were being pretty rowdy and i was just trying to make sure everything was safe and he just turned around and like punched me right in the chest and i was like out for the count <laughs> yeah like, I bet. It knocked out of me like whole thing just totally unexpected i did i remember similar as like a huge guy who was in front of it was like going into the haunt but i was just fucking with him because he was like he was scared but but then he turns around to me and he goes listen i'm not afraid to go back to prison and i was like okay okay <laughs> right, like watch him <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like that's when management has to like, okay, we're gonna like, we're gonna follow somebody to make sure nothing happened. Yeah, that and and the people. I I feel so bad. There was uh, actually I ran into an an actress on a short film that I was working on who remembered me from Thirteenth Floor when she was younger, and the shit that I said to her like kept her up that night. And I was like, I figured it would. <laughs> Right. Sometimes I'll run into someone and they'll be like, they'll be talking about this haunt that they went to. And I'm like, oh my God, there was this character and she looked like a gargoyle. And I was like, oh, that was me. Yeah. And they were like, what? And that, and they were like, you scared me so bad. Like, I still think about you. And I'm like, you're welcome. I'm like, that's what you came I still for. think about you. It's so great. <laughs> what is actually, speaking of that, what is like, what's your best scare story slash kind of memorable reactions from people? I mean, you obviously... The peeing the pants is the badge of honor. Yeah, except for the fact that, like, when someone pees their pants, often, like, there's no janitorial staff. Often they pee in your area. And you oh, have to, like, go up and clean it. So it's a total badge of honor, but it's also awful. The fact that somebody emptied their entire bladder in your room is great, but also, I I feel like there should be, like, Lysol wipes or something to actually, you know, to mop up or something. Right. Well, <laughs> this isn't the best one, but I had one where I was I was working in a haunt and um, it was a maze and I and I could hit like three different spots because as you, yeah. the customer walked through the maze, I could like go behind the scenes and hit them in like three different points. And so I went and I scared this guy at point one and then point two and point three. And then I just started smelling something and I was like... It reeks in here. And I wasn't a manager at the time. So I called my manager on the radio and I was like, hey, like something is up. Like it smelled, my whole area smells. And we actually had to shut down the hot and turn the lights on to see what was going on because this guy peed from point one all the way through the maze 2.2. And it was so much that there was like, we had to put down like, um, sawdust and like let it absorb it and then like <laughs> sweep it up. Oh my God. <laughs> Was it, was it, in, it was inside, yeah? He was inside, yeah. Oh. So, like, we had to shut down for, like, 15 or 20 minutes and take care of this before we could open again. And it was a busy night. So, like, it was, it was a That's terrible a pretty good one. That's a pretty good shut one. down. A line so, of me. Yeah. And, I mean, it was a lot. I was like, how big is your bladder? Or, like, did I get the whole group? Because, my God. Well, the problem so now funny. is that they serve drinks in line. So these people are, you know, when you wait in line for like three hours, you're getting hammered and you don't really have an opportunity to get out of line to go to the bathroom. Right. And they should have, they should have porta potties like, like right at the door around, around the, like the last turn of the, of the line. 
Yeah, I agree. And I think that there should just be like, even maybe a system of like line holders, like, hey, I have to pee. And yeah. you have like a monster yeah, that like yeah. stands with a group or something and then and then goes back. I think I think that actually that just reminded me. I think my favorite uh moment was I, I love the parking lot so much because you just get to have so much fun. But I'm I'm in a fat suit as a clown and I have a chainsaw and without a chain. And my favorite thing to do would be to quietly walk into the middle of the of the you know the line that you know going back and forth i would bend down start the chainsaw and literally just the the effect of the circle of people knocking over barriers to get away from me i just and i was in a full mask so i could just be underneath there laughing but we're, 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 we're a little twisted you do that <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> And just watching the line just disperse, and I was just like, I don't even think those people want to go in now. No, <laughs> that was my that was always my goal was to make people tap out before they got in, so like they would pay and then not even make it to the to inside. Right, that's always like, like you put so much work into like the building and training yep. the actors and like the whole thing, but it is such it's such like an amazing feeling to be like, no, 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 we were so good, you didn't even want to go in. Yeah, no, correct. Like. Like you didn't even get to see the inside. It's like all the senior actors outside, just like, just just raking the money. Like, hey, listen, we're making your day easier. We're making <laughs> right, right. We're making the line shorter for everyone oh who can make it in. So funny. <laughs> so actually, speaking of like you know the whole kids thing and stuff, what there's obviously different levels of tolerances for scares. D- it, when you're designing something, or when you're even like thinking about the experience is there any sort of balance between like making them excited but also like not you know causing a heart attack no (laughs) Uh, i I figured so so the designing is basically like how can we make it as worse you know the worst possible because you're inside a horror majority of yeah the majority of people that go in they they don't want it toned down they right. you know they want to ex- they they're paying really good money and so it's they want to really, yeah for sure yeah so they you know they're paying really good money so i try to design the scariest best you know best show even if you're not scared just like looking at the sets looking at the costumes looking at the makeup no matter what you're into i want you to be like super impressed with everything that's going on and if i need to tone it down because i see something is going wrong with a child i can tone it down right right but i don't want ever i don't want someone to walk out and be like wow that was lame you know (laughs) like i want them to even if they weren't scared because like when i go to haunts i'm not scared i've worked in the industry for i was gonna say yeah like i still love going i'm not none of the actors if if actually i'll i'll say good job if somebody actually gets me at this point but i love i just I, the the design and the experience is so cool that I right. enjoy that side of it. And that's what I do. I mean, I look through and I'm like, oh, I bet, you know, the next actor is going to jump out of there. because that's Oh, I straight up, I, look call, I call thing. it out for our group. I'm like, there, right. there, there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. And so, like, for someone who's either been in the industry or really appreciates makeup or costumes or set design, like, even if you're not scared, I want you to be able to look through and go, wow they did an amazing which job which totally it. happens that's that's awesome so yeah it's really impressive that's great um what uh what are some of your favorites so i know animatronics are really popular is there anything else besides that that you love to like techniques or technology to create scares um technology wise I actually tend to be I like I tend to be a little bit more low tech just because even though animatronics are good, you can still kind of tell they're an animatronic, you yeah. know, like there's you can still tell they're an animatronic. So I go a little bit old school. I actually prefer um, low tech and actors. I prefer to have really, really well trained actors that can respond because. Some of the funniest things to actors in haunted houses is when you can do a really witty comeback to someone who's just trying to make you break character and i think a really well-trained cast is going to sort of outshine any kind of technology 
Um, but I do like technology that pairs with actors. So like, okay. um, so technology that where you have like flyers where they are like attached to the ceiling and they swing yep. down because most people aren't I've looking up that. in a haunted house. <laughs> Right. So so that's the technology that I like. I like something that enhances an actor's performance versus well, like yeah, yeah, substituting. Totally. No, yeah. yeah. The ad it doesn't replace. Exactly. Yeah. By the way, and, and I'm I'm comfortable saying because I'll never work for him again, but uh we're looking at you thirteenth floor. <laughs> we both work there. And I I don't know if I'll get if you're still in the industry with them, but <laughs> I do, I just remember so I went. Uh, I am not. I uh... you're not okay. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was gonna say yeah. So I went for their Krampus. The Krampus thing was sweet. That was that was super fun. But when we went for Halloween last year, I was just so let down. I was like, oh my god, you have like three actors in there and they're just banging on shit. They're not like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we were we were the height of of that experience with you know I don't know if they're making uh, uh, best haunted houses in America lists anymore. Uh, well, I think I think they're trying to make most haunted houses lists because yeah. they now have the most haunted houses. Right, in, right, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, so I think that's what they're one of the over quality, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I think I, I'm, I'm back to your your explanation on that. When you go low tech and you have really well trained actors, that because that's where that's where the like you know I still can't believe some of the stuff that I came up with on the on the spot when somebody would try to talk to me, like right, just happens because you're in it and you're having fun. But those are the best when they're just like, what the hell did you like? When you really surprise them with what you say, those are those are the best experiences. Right. Like one of the, the, the first year that I was actually um, at 13th, I did this character and it, it was brutal. So it was me and another person. And it was basically like the, the idea was that and it was my idea. Like this wasn't pushed on me was that this woman, me, had been completely brainwashed into thinking she was a dog. Right. So I was on a leash, collar, whole thing. And people would walk by and there'd be like a dude sitting in a chair and I'd be on a leash. And it was a full harness setup that I had made. And the other actor's job was just to hold the chain. And I would just go like crazy and like act like I was going to bite him and scratch him and all of this. And it was such a disturbing character that I switched. I got a new guy actor every night because at the end of the night, every guy went to the manager and was like, so this is like psychological trauma for me and I can't do it. I will. Uh, you go. You know, listen. There's a reason that you train the actors. You go hard <laughs> when you do your thing. I do. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That one. I mean, everyone who saw that, including the owner of the haunted house, just walked by me and they were like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> like, no, like this I is great. This is great. Just don't do it around me. Just don't do it around me. This is great, though. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So." That I had a, I actually had a I had a similar setup in my first year at asylum where okay I was up on a wall with with uh hands in like cuffs att- attached to chains and I would you know sit there obviously do the fake thing until they had the conversation and then these chains would come out of the wall to a stopper so then I, so I literally would come out at them just screaming my face off and I would just pin people, and, and the room wasn't that big, so I would pin people against the wall, like hold, being held back by these chains. It was, oh, it was great. I would, yeah. I, that was before I learned to, you know, not make a bunch of noise because I was just going hoarse every single night. <laughs> that was, and that, uh, that was probably before my time, but when I started, I started doing voice training yeah. with all of the actors so that they didn't lose their voice because in 18 years, I never lost my voice. Wow. And you've heard my scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, see, and I, I just went the opposite route where I would just keep a, a little gift baggie of uh, throw lo- of, of throw lozenges next to it, and I would just be sucking on them the whole night because I was like, I know I'm going to screw my voice up. <laughs> so at least my, my breath will be good, and, uh, it, <laughs> I, you know, I have a little uh, menthol in my throat when I'm doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Snack, the snacks that everyone keeps at their at their actor spots is kind of hilarious to me. <laughs> well, what's some of the weirdest? What's some of the weirdest snacks you've seen? 
Oh, like full dinners? Like, which, you know, like a Chipotle burrito. Right? Like, I can't fault them for it because, you know, I always tell people, I always tell people when they work in a, they're like, is it fun to work in a haunted house? I was like, well, you know, um, put yourself in a dark room and put on (laughs) some death metal or some screaming and just sit there by yourself for four hours. And if you can take it, then you can deal with haunted houses. Yeah. And so, like, the snacks that people brought, it's like, oh, you're sitting in a dark room listening to screaming and it's slow and you're just, like, eating your Chipotle burrito. Yeah. (laughs) Like... That's yeah. by the way. So, so think about for anybody that like, cause we're, this will be, I will, this will be out soon. This will be out for the, for the hot season. I actually didn't even realize that. That's hilarious. We're at the beginning of October. I'm putting this out as soon as possible. So think about what you're going through. What that actor was doing right before you got there was snacking on a Chipotle burrito and <laughs> drinking some Gatorade in the corner. <laughs> right. And just thinking about what they were going to do to you. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Just, like, I'm just munching on this Chipotle burrito, and what am I going to do? I'm going to jump out and pretend to barf on you. Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> hey, friends. It's your podcast buddy, Noah Midman here. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about one of my passion projects, my clothing brand, Clothing for Creators. Roll the tape. If my life were a movie, the hero's big speech would end with, stop waiting, start creating because that's the drive behind my story. Like when I couldn't afford to finish film school. So instead I started my own production company and gave myself a trial by fire YouTube business degree. And it's not just me with these kinds of stories. There is this growing movement of passionate, creative, flow state writing, hustling, persistent creators and entrepreneurs that are taking the internet and the world by storm. Everybody told me I wasn't gonna be able to make any money as an artist. Now, 15 years later, I've worked on three continents. I do own my house, my shop, I'm booked out eight months ahead. I don't subscribe to being a starving artist. Creativity and I are very deep, dark lovers. I've just decided I'm just gonna make stuff. And even if it's not perfect, like it's getting made. You're gonna think that there's right answers and there's not. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Let's just throw dye on it and it'll look great. You don't need rules some old guy in a suit made up. You don't need anyone telling you that your voice doesn't matter. We are makers, creative types, side hustlers, doers. Why? Because we get shit done. The most important thing every single day is just to get your shit done. Just keep doing it, keep producing, keep creating, and as you do that, you're gonna start becoming the person that you want to be. Don't be scared to try. Commit, you can't half-ass do something. We're full-ass around here. So there's a film you need to make, a company you need to create, a voice you need to share, a product you know the world needs. Put all of yourself into it until anyone who has ever doubted you starts asking you for a job. Then you get to play for a living. You get to create community. Partnerships, collaborations, building bonds with people that like the same stuff you like. You get to live with your heart on your sleeve, a smile on your face, and a solid answer to when anybody asks. Why do you do what you do? Sometimes you have to say fuck all the rules to get something that you really need to get out of yourself. You don't need the opinion of the old guy in the suit. You have to give yourself permission to just go. A little less conversation, a little more action. Clothing for creators. Go check out snowmanfilms.shop today. Hey there, fellow creatives. Conversations with Creators dives deep into the minds of successful filmmakers, artists, musicians, and all-around awesome people. We are looking for some kick-ass sponsors to help us keep this show on the road. If you want to reach a tribe of dedicated listeners who are just as passionate about creating as you are, then look no further. Our audience is full of people who appreciate a good laugh and are always on the lookout for new ways to fuel their creativity. So, Let's team up and create some magic together. We'll work with you to make sure that your brand is showcased in the best light possible. And who knows, maybe we'll even become lifelong friends. Just imagine, years from now, we'll be reminiscing about the good old days when we first teamed up to take the world by storm. Send us an email at noah at snowmanfilms.net to say hey and get the ball rolling. Now back to the episode. I'm about, and then I, what I love too is that you can go from when you get good at it, you can go from that to in about five seconds being ready to go at your spot. Yeah. And I mean, that's one of the biggest things when I'm training actors. It's like you need to be able to be in character like that. Like you can be totally hanging out with your best friend in the next room and you're chit chatting and you're 
talking about the next movie that's out anything but if you hear footsteps come around that corner you better be in character that second like yeah. you need to just be able to shift instantly i think it only happened about once or twice in the whole career but i remember yeah like literally so we were like doing the whole thing where you like chit chat and then i would get caught up in the in in the, the conversation and out of the corner of my eye, I see the next group and both of us just immediately get into character and like we're together, but it's because like we're in. So I would go back. I would like go, go by them, but like still get a scare out of it. Right. And it's so funny because you can like you just did it. You can totally see the shift. You're like yeah, talking yeah. and it's like shoulders. I have like right yeah, person. Get out, like, three feet. Immediate. <laughs> Put a shoulder up and walk weird. You're fine. Right. Like. <laughs> But that's, you know, that goes back to having that control of your body of like yeah. knowing what you are supposed to look like when you're trying to look scary. So and it just being that natural, like, oh, this is what I do. Here I go. I found using levels was really fun. Like anytime I can either be crawling or uh, because back then I had, you know, legs of steel from all the parkour training, I would go up high somewhere and drop down on people, not on them, but like three feet in front of them and ju i mean the amount of peeing that happened at that one was insane because you're right. coming out of you're coming out of the darkness well it's so interesting because it is so rare for people to look up in a haunted house and i yeah. always try to look up like when i'm going through them because it's so interesting to see what's not even haunted house a lot of haunted houses designers they sort of forget about up yeah and i always try to think about what's above you like what visuals are above you what can come down you know yeah. like i always wanted that because it's so rare you're always you're either looking around or you're looking down because you're so worried you're gonna trip right yeah yeah and and a lot of the scares come from a lower angle up at you exactly so yeah so like playing with levels especially up is is huge some of the best scares definitely come from something High coming down, yeah, down yeah. on top of you. Oh, yeah. I love the uh, those bungee rigs are super fun too. Right. I yeah. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed those rigs a lot. I didn't get to use them very often. I was mostly you know putting the people in them, but I did get to try them a couple of times, and it was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and and you, I mean, you get to. I'm sure you with how many years you've done it, you got to test out a lot. Like, actually, do you prefer indoor or outdoor? I prefer indoor haunts and I prefer indoor haunts because I like being able to truly control the environment. Right. Yeah. Cause uh, I did, I uh, was a general manager for an outdoor haunt for three years. And you know, if it snowed, it was really fun for the actors cause we're all bundled up and you know, it's fun, but being able to like institute temperature changes like to put a space heater in a room so you walk in and it's really hot you're like why is it so hot in here and then another room like blast air conditioning yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's another way to play with senses and it's way easier to do that in an indoor haunt and you can really sort of control the environment in an indoor haunt yeah you, so, you get the that's what i like with about the air conditioning it. and you get somebody who just it loves it so much they don't care that they're cold Right, like the, the actor exactly. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that immediate, like, especially walking, you're you're expecting you're indoors and you're expecting to be a normal temperature, and then to walk into a room that is an inappropriate temperature, it all it just makes your like nerves tingle. It just makes your spidey senses go off of like something isn't right here. And even if you don't recognize it in your brain, your body does, and it sort of primes you for like whatever that actor is about to do to you. You're yeah. already like hyper alert. The study oh. sense is such a good way to describe that. Like, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, something's off, and I know it's supposed to be, but still, this is weird, and I'm not sure if I'm a fan. It's like, perfect, welcome. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and that's, yeah, so that those are the things I like playing with the most. Like, a sense of unease, like being able to create just a sense of unease is, just from the very moment you walk in, like, it's going to set you up to be scared it's going to set you up to be scared of things that you maybe wouldn't be afraid of yeah before. so what have been some of your favorite rooms to design um so uh, one of my favorite rooms i did i so the character was really hard on me so i had to retire the character but it was basically a mary kelly and jack the ripper scene and so the scene um so here's another sensory thing you walked into a completely lit room 
all the lights are on. You can see oh, that's everything. Weird. That's weird. Yeah. And in a hot, that's not what you expect, right? Yeah. So it's a totally lit room. Um, and me and the other actor that were acting in this room, we designed it together. And so I was, I had makeup all on my whole body. Because if you know Jack the Ripper and Mary Kelly, like, she was flayed, basically. Chest open, whole whole bit, right? So I basically just wore underwear and, like, this chest plate. And other than that, nothing. Covered in blood, right. gross. But we had a pristine white sheet over me. And so you walk into this room. It's a pristine white room. You're like, oh, my God, it's so lit. And then you see this body on the bed, no blood or no nothing, the white sheet. And you're just so uneasy about it. And then the lights would go down. They would just cut. And the the sheet was rigged up uh, with some cables. And he would pull the sheet off of me. And then a strobe would come up. And you'd see this just awful, grotesque me. And I'm alive. And I'm, like, reaching out for them. And then the lights go black again. And then the strobes come up again and he's over me and he stabs me in the chest with a knife and I've got fake blood in my mouth and I just spew it all over everything. That's amazing. And oh, that's, like, yeah, that's rough because you got to reset for every single group. Exactly. And then yeah. the lights go out and he comes around the bed. So then he's like right in front of their yeah, face. Yeah. And he's got, it's it's technically a sponge, but it looks like a fart and he has warm water and he just squeezes it over everyone and they think it's just blood. That was like... That's the ultimate. What hunk was that? Because that is definitely not corporate. No, so that was that was actually the first hunt I did. That was the Hearthstone in. You you led with that, just like I I love my brain. So yeah, so I did that. We did that character, and then I did that character in two haunted houses after I sort of took it. And then it was just it was way too hard on me because I have this fake blood all over me. So like my arms would get waxed and I was cold all the time. Once I was in the bed, I couldn't go to the bathroom. Like it was really hard on my body. And so like once you go into like corporate haunted houses where you have more of like a conga line of people, that wouldn't work at all. But in a small pond, that was like I had people like peeing themselves. I had people running into walls like. Viewing blood is definitely a, a step up. That is, uh, I love that. And also just, I mean, the sensor, I mean, I, that the, anything to do with water, honestly, is just mm-hmm. like, it's even, and that's it, like, even like the fishing line hanging down that's like supposed to be spider webs that fucks with, like, just, it's the smallest stuff that when it touches you, it really gets to you. Yeah. 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 That was, it, and that's, I love that. And that's oh, why the dripping water and the, like the fishing line, like all of that. And the fishing line, you can step it up and you can spray it with a spray bottle. So that is wet and. Yeah. I mean, no. You go spraying in between awful. herbs. Oh my yeah. God. It's awful. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of the spider stuff, that was one thing that I just, ra- I was bored. So I, I was in the spider room at 13th and I just did an Irish accent the entire night. <laughs> And then it was actually hard to get out of at the end of the night. I I found that I was in character so and the same character so often and for so many years that sometimes it would take me like a while to get out of character. Like at the end of the night, I would just, you know, sort of just continue walking with my shoulders hunched and my arms up and like do my little weird walk that I did. And people would be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, it's become so natural to me that like I had to think about yeah. not doing it. <laughs> well, because cause it's, I mean, it's so many hours. Because, again, the box office closes at, what, midnight? But there's still a line. So, like, yeah, and there were you're times... there from, like, 8 to, like, 2 a.m. Right. And it's it's even longer than that, especially for management, right? Because yeah, so actors get there, you know, between 6 and 7 because doors open at 7 or whatever. And, you know, they're getting their makeup and everything done. And management gets there at like four to open the doors and if you were like me i was you know management and i did makeup so i had to get all of my actors ready for like get them signed in for payroll all of that and then go pick up an airbrush and airbrush everybody and then get myself into costume and then walk the haunt and deal with security issues deal with you know actor issues deal with medical issues and be in character and also scaring you know as i went around all, right. all this all this by the way not just like oh i'm gonna go walk around with the walkie talkie like no you're getting scares constantly and doing being in character the whole night yeah that's wild so you were you were yeah. i mean more than the parking lot you were the whole you did that but in the entire haunt and taking care of issues that is a lot to handle exactly like i had a radio on me at all times and i was in character at all times unless it was 
unless it was some kind of like medical or security emergency i was in character the whole time and like often i would sit um in between because there's usually like two haunted houses with another queue and so often i would sit in between those two haunted houses just watching the crowd and like identifying problem customers or like dealing with issues um so sometimes i would just like pull my hair in front of my face and talk on the radio (laughs) because i had to like that's a great technique it works it works that works great because you if you're whispering to yourself with your hair over your face, nobody wants to come near you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And those are things that, like, I really had to think of as, like, making a character that fit in all the different scenes and that yeah. could go through and fit in the scene, not look out of place, be able to be in character, but also be able to do the much more important side of my job, which was taking care of the actors, make sure that they were hydrated, make sure that, you know, they weren't injured, everything. I mean, yeah. including hate to say it but including psychological breakdowns of actors there are many actors that you don't know you know you put them in a room and they don't know that that is going to make them have a panic attack and then you have to deal with a panic attack because they didn't know it was going to cause a panic attack so well i mean especially too like that was that was one of the reasons i really uh i love the parking lot is because for me psychologically i have a big issue with time like i need to know what time how long and stuff so like being in a room and not knowing when the night's going to end really fucked with me. And it, it wasn't that the hours, and I loved the scares. It was just like, when's the last group? Right, and that messes with a lot of people, especially because you're not supposed to have your cell phone. You're not right. supposed to have these things. And so, and that's why I tell people, you know, if you want to work in a haunted house, go sit in a dark room and listen to, like, death metal for four hours. Don't have a time piece. Just have it set so it'll be four hours and see if you can do that because on slow nights, that's what you're doing. You're yeah. sitting in a room by yourself. There's no groups. You're just listening to the track that's playing over. And like, that might be an issue for you. No. And that's like the very baseline of like, if you do that and you're fine with it, then we can like work on, we can move up from there. But if right. that's going to cause you a panic attack or that's going to make you really upset, then this probably isn't a good gig for you. I did have one hack on that actually, but it is a very specific situation. So because they have these huge latex masks now that cover, you know, everything. I would just have an earbud in, one earbud with music softly, that, uh, you know, whatever. That's like when I was running Chainsaw or whatever. Like, if you have the mask over it, nobody can see it. You don't have to go insane, and you can kind of have an easier night. <laughs> right, and I... So that's a good one, and I have found that I did it for so long that I could actually sleep in that environment because i was so used to it and people were like are you like insane and i was like i don't think i'm insane but that might be a sign like <laughs> i like i it. totally didn't go that I, I definitely have been tired enough in a room to where i could fall asleep but the i'm sure the dreams would just be the weirdest shit <laughs> but obviously you don't want to fall asleep because you're work but yeah I was just- <laughs> right yeah but like definitely there were definitely times that it was like the soundtrack was going and it was before anyone was going to be there. I'd been working all day and it was just like, I just need to close my eyes for five minutes. And no. so the way, track is totally way. going. This is all after day jobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes. sometimes houses don't pay for shit. <laughs> right. And like I was. I was working a bunch of jobs and sometimes when I would do the media events for the hot, the media events are like morning news. They're like six oh, or seven in the morning. Those. So I'd like, I remember those. Yeah, I'd work the hot and then like I'd close the hot and then I'd go to work at the bar and get off at 2 a.m. And then I'd like I'd sleep in the parking lot of the hot in my car so that I could make the news shoot which because I had to be there. Yeah, because I had to be there at four to get ready to have the news shoot at like six or five thirty in the morning. Right. And then I'm already there like and I'm already in makeup. So then I just go to like my day job. And so like there were multiple times that I was not working on two hours of sleep and I was working seven days a week. Like, yeah. It was exhausting. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, you really have to love it. You really, you know, and even if you love it, that third week in October comes around, you're like, all right, I'm all right. This is a lot. Well, and even more now, like they're, they're starting to be open from like September 15th to like November 15th. Yeah. And I mean, they were already pretty close to that when I was working. And I, of course, worked way months before that, you know, hiring the actors, training the actors, building yeah. sets, doing all of that. And then way after too. Uh, but now they're doing like you know the Valentine's thing, the Christmas, yeah. Thing, which I get, that makes total sense. You're going to have the space, use it for multiple things. But it's, I mean, it's yeah, it's uh, it's just it's exploded so much in like the last what five years, and yeah, 
I mean, I think he was getting really, really big even beyond that because I remember there were some nights where, like, we had like a six to eight hour line. Oh my like God. even the VIP, even the VIP line was like three or four hours. And I just remember looking outside, peeking out and looking at these lines and just being like, we're going to be here forever. Like, we are, nice. like, like the sun's going to come up. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's just been really building for, it's, for a young quite person's a game. it's a young person's game. It is. It <laughs> is. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind going back into it, going back into like and managing and teaching and designing. And I really, I do like, I really enjoy that. But I also, I think I would have to do it like for myself. I'd have to be the yeah. owner because I don't enjoy oh, working with um, people. The last time now. I worked for you was at the outside one. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Dead what zone. Was the name of that? Dead zone. Dead zone. That was so much fun. I also that realized that fun. I never picked up my paycheck, and I I was fine with it. <laughs> I totally forgot to pick up my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> because it was because it was just a fun thing I was doing on weekends. Like it wasn't, you know. I mean, I think I think we mailed it to everyone, so unless we didn't have your right address, <laughs> maybe it may have been that. It may have been that. <laughs> no, but like I was, it was sliding outside. It was the corn maze. It was just so much. Like I, because I'd only done inside stuff before that, so the outside change was really cool. Yeah, and I do enjoy doing outside haunts, but they feel a little. To me, at least, they feel a little like less pressure. Yeah, like, oh, and I don't, sure. I don't want to say that in like the standard isn't as high, but like there's way more work involved in an indoor haunted house of like building a hole inside versus We're like, loving it. yeah, in, instead of like growing a corn maze. And so I felt like when I worked outside there, I felt a lot less pressure to, I don't know, let, just it was like a low pressure haunt compared yeah. to working in indoor haunt where it's just like i mean you know when i was working 13th i used to like count my steps through the maze so that i could do it you know blindfolded at a sprint at a walk all of this because if there was an emergency i just felt like i needed to know it was like at an outdoor haunt i just run through the corn you know like, right. i didn't i didn't have to do those sort of extra things that i had to do in indoor haunts. the one thing i loved about 13th too was uh it, it when you work in it and there's a mirror maze, you know you understand how to beat the mirror maze. Just look at your feet. <laughs> you can right. sprint through a mirror maze. Just look at your feet. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but it was fun to myth lead people. Oh like, yeah, yeah, totally. oh, oh yeah, like you know what the trick is? Look at your hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> like look up. <laughs> yeah, look up. Right, right, right. Like that helps. <laughs> It's just darkness and, and metal. <laughs> right, exactly. It doesn't help you at all. <laughs> the uh this the the fog machine smell will forever be with me in in my like triggering memories of, of those years. Oh god, <laughs> yes. Yes. But not just not your standard, like the the industrial ones. Yeah, the ones that show up in drums on a pallet to haunt the house. <laughs> you know, something for me that is a trigger is high shoe. Oh, yeah, 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 Because you would come through with high shoes. Yeah, you, by the way, you were well, fantastic. Because high reality. shoes sent us a pallet. Yeah, so it was just... Because they, yeah, they sponsored us, but we couldn't, like, sell it or anything because because of the legality of it or yeah. whatever. And so they sent us a pallet. So that's what, like, everybody, like, people lived off of that oh, yeah. for, like, that month. It was, and so now every time I see it, I'm just like... <laughs> it was, it was high chew monster and uh red bull yeah monster red bull and freaking uh uh cough drops yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so actually i'd love to other than uh other than the haunted house thing what is kind of well because you haven't been in a while what what uh what are you up to nowadays um so re recently i started a business actually um where i am making and selling costumes for different things like i just did um yeah i did pirate fair that was uh, a couple weekends ago up in north Glen, and i had a booth set up and we sold a bunch of pirate clothing um so yeah lately just mostly sitting in front of a sewing machine like creative brain just making really uh lately i've been into really high fantasy costumes like making my own patterns for them using just 
techniques that don't really exist, just kind of like playing around with how this looks and being sort of inspired in that way. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's awesome. And that is, uh, that's a total like in the same like creative space. That's awesome. It sounds like you're having fun with it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to like not have a pressure because they're not commissions, right? I'm going to just like make my own like designs of what i want and then people are like oh that's awesome i'm gonna buy it from you which is yeah way better than commission you ever see it <laughs> no no that's the way it don't you don't want to do a pirate costume commission because the amount of detail i feel like somebody would put into like this is what i want exactly and it's not quite like no no i'm creating stuff you just buy it right exactly yeah well, it's way better than other than that what's like a hobby that makes you relax and kind of take you away from it um paddleboarding nice yeah paddleboarding getting out on the water i mean i've always been like a water baby but um yeah so definitely getting out on the water paddleboarding it's quiet like you could just lay out there think about yeah. stuff that's that's definitely my like get out get out of my head get out of very good one baby. for that it's kind of like the fishing thing like you're just out there and it's calm and there's nothing else going at it's a lot different from the uh the dark room death metal uh scenario right. but to be comfortable in both is impressive right it, it is and i just think i don't know i just think that when you've done something for so long and especially when you start so young because you know yeah. you don't hear about people starting that young anymore it's very yeah. and and even i wouldn't like if a 13 year old was like i'd love to work here i no nope. <laughs> like i know that i did it but i don't think that that was you can't help an alert or something like not you're not gonna be in the house absolutely not Right, exactly. So, yeah. Okay, actually, you know. this is, I love this question. What do you, from all your experience, because we've both given so many kids so many nightmares, uh, what is the minimum age you suggest for a kid? And I know it's different per kid, but, like, what's an average age that like, you would be okay with them going through a house? So, usually the haunted houses themselves say 12 or 13 plus. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it really, really depends on the haunted house. So, like, if you're more on, you know, sensory issues, things like that, I feel like you can go maybe a little younger. But if you're doing a really grotesque haunted house, if you're doing something that has, you know, naked bodies that are being cut up and, you know, saw-like yeah. productions, man, I wouldn't, I would say, like, late teenager to adult, you know, yeah. like 15 to 18 um, but I also feel like it really, really depends on the haunted house. You really need to understand like what you're doing in your haunted house to sort of rate those. Because yeah. some, you know, 12, 13 is probably okay. And some it's like absolutely not, you know, like absolutely so, not. <laughs> so, so that's perfect. So for anybody listening, please don't bring anybody like under 10, under 11. Yeah to a house it's just not gonna end well for you because if you're like us the actors we i at least me and i this may be me being a psychopath um i would always want to teach the parents a lesson to never bring them back and i would just go after the kids super hard you know what i would too because i feel like that really does fall on the parent because every haunted house i've ever worked at has said you know 12 and 13 and above please don't like we're not responsible and if your kid is in elementary school if you're confident they can handle it then you're taking that confidence as your responsibility you have analyzed your kid and so if they take it well well then it's consequences on you yeah you know like if you talk to management if you're like hey my you know my kid really really wants to go through this haunted house but they're a little afraid is there any way we could tone it down I will accept that. Yeah, like, that I will end the different scenario than just bringing them and being like, they could handle it. Like, because yeah. the actors will go after the kids because of that reason. Exactly. And if your kid can't handle it, they're going to have the best time. If oh, yeah. you can't, you're going to have the worst time. But either way, like, as a parent, you need to know your kid. Yeah. You need to know your kid. So, like, no, I like that, though. So, if you really, if, if, if it's under 10, don't even think about it. If I wouldn't. No. If it's a little older than that, but you're not sure, talk to me and just be like, hey, my kid really wants to go because the haunted houses can absolutely tone it down for them because they there, there's there's walkie talkies, there's communication. Be smart about it. Like I have kids now and there's I mean, they would just get destroyed. They would get yeah. destroyed. 
Exactly. And I certainly would have. As a player, I don't want to do that to them. Right. And I certainly would have if I would have gone as a nine or a 10 year old. Like that would have not been fun for me at all. And, you know, my mom definitely knew that. And she was even a little skeptical when it was like, you're going to work a haunted house. <laughs> no, she was like, you're like, had you been to one ever. before you worked at it? Um, yeah, I had been to the one at Elitches. Yeah. But like, I it was the year before I worked the first one. And so I was 12. And my stepdad was huge. He was 6'5 and like huge construction worker. And I just like plastered myself to him and he, you know, walked me through. So, yeah. so that one wasn't like too much of a big deal. Um, and I'm like, yeah, if you're like bringing was... a kid through and their eyes are closed the whole time, like you just wasted that money and they're they're not having a good time. Like, just make it a make it a date night, get a babysitter. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So that's the only one I had been to before that, before yeah. I started working it. But you know, for I wonder me, if starting does Eliches have? I feel like they would be the ones that have like a little bit more of a fun kids kind of thing. Oh. Um... I mean, it's been a lot of years since I've been to yeah. it, uh, um, but I don't think that they do because you actually, um, so you remember Ricky. I do. He used to run the Elitist one before he moved to third. Oh, shit. Floor. Yeah. So That's like, case, you Ricky, know, we love you, buddy. <laughs> uh, so he's, he was no holds bar, you know, kids oh, and he, he, ran he, was like so that. he was like that at asylum. He was. Exactly. He would get me consistently at Asylum, actually. Exactly. So he was the one who ran it. So I really don't feel like they did it. <laughs> I like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Made it nice for kids. But I know uh, Laura is working there right now. Yeah, yeah. I did see, you know, I I follow a lot of the people who used to work yeah. for me, like on Facebook. I see what they're up to now and I see what they're doing. So. I'm talking to Jesse later this week. Yeah. Yeah. I see Jesse like every week. <laughs> <laughs> that man is committed. I love it. Right. Yeah. What are you talking? Uh, what are you going on him with? Uh, are you talking hot uh, house with him? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm going to have him on the podcast. Yeah. Are you going to talk hot and houses? Yeah. Is that what you're having him on the podcast yeah, for? Yeah, of course. Nice. He's a good, he's a great one. Yeah. I love, I, I'm very actually interested because he's been mostly acting. He doesn't have, he doesn't do the management side or is, is he doing that too? Um, not at this one. He, yeah. he's doing basically what you did, like parking lot type yeah. stuff. Um, I think he did a little bit of management stuff for me. Um, but he mostly just does the acting the stuff. That's what he likes. And that's yeah. what, yeah. And that's no, what he's he really good at. Multicolored so. contacts and he goes all out. He's, he's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> so actually, uh, do you have kind of roll out the red carpet for you a little bit, um, with your pirate stuff, where can people find that? Um, so right now I'm not selling online. I am going to get that set up soon, but if you want to see what I'm working on, I have yeah. a TikTok um, called, and here we sew. And here we sew. Yeah. So, so, so <laughs> yeah. So if you go check out that TikTok, um, that's where I'm kind of showing how I'm working on stuff and what I'm working on. And I will eventually look at if I'm selling stuff online, um, I will link that to that and yeah. I will let people know like what shows I'm going to be at to sell. Yeah, that. perfect. Are you, do you use a lot of uh, sea shanties for your audio? <laughs> you know, I actually don't, and I probably should, though. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> it's probably a really good idea. Now, I'm telling you, if you have some, like, because I, I love that kind of, you know, making time-lapse stuff, and mm -hmm. you put that on some sea shanties and watch watch maybe maybe some, some viral stuff happens. Right, and I have been doing time-lapse stuff of, of yeah. sewing, so yeah. Because sewing is, you know, boring at regular speed. <laughs> That's actually true. That's a good point. Sewing at regular speed for for normal people to watch is pretty boring. But sewing time lapse with seeing something come together is super interesting. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Eat it up. So, and it's a whole new ballgame. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, Cece, it's been so much fun talking to you and catching up and traveling back to the uh the haunted house days those were those were a blast they were good times yeah thank you for having me absolutely everybody go check it out um i will link the tiktok channel in the show notes tell them one more time what it is and here we sew perfect go check that out 
support her, buy some stuff. And uh, for everybody watching and listening, I will see you next time.